Good evening. Welcome. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. I have a nightgown that says hump day. It has little camels all over it. It's never mind. Happy middle of the week and the middle of whatever is going on in your life. Our intention is that if you need a little lift, if you need a little faith, if you need a little faith lift, if you need a better relationship of what's going on with you in spirit, that's why we're here. And you are always so welcome to join us. I like to think that we're kind of a spiritual clinic. We'll help you feel better if you're feeling bad, and we'll help you feel even better, hopefully, if you're feeling fine. And we can also function as a spiritual urgent care if that happens to be what your life needs in any given moment. We're here to make your life better, period. And thrilled to be able to do that. To get us all playing off the same page, I, I would invite you to listen to these words. And if they resonate with you, please feel free to repeat after me. There is a creative, motivating power in the universe. There is a creative, motivating power in the universe. It is the intelligence. It is the intelligence. And the power. And the power. And the love. And the love. Back of all creation. Back of all creation. And it is the life within me. And it is the life within me. I know it. I know it. I feel it. I feel it. I believe it. I believe it. And so it is. And so it is. Yay! Yay! Well, there's kind of in a little nutshell what what we believe, that there is a, a power for good in the universe, and you can use it to create good. Um, that same power doesn't make decisions for you, doesn't decide whether or not you're thinking right or believing right. It just goes for it. It's like it has a one-word vocabulary. So whatever you're thinking, it's saying yes to. And um, some of us aren't paying a lot of attention to what we're thinking. And so that great cosmic yes is creating chaos in our lives. And what we need to do is change what we believe. It's not a new thought. 2,000 years ago, a man came and said, it is done unto you as you believe. That's what we're saying. So what do you think the world believes right now? Hmm? Have you been paying any attention to what's going on in the world at large this week? Delta is clearly not a word meaning the fourth letter of the Greek alphabet anymore. The governor of New York is in trouble. The governor of California may be recalled. And the governor of Arkansas says he regrets the ban on mask mandates um, as COVID-19 cases surge in his state. Offhand, I'd say this is apparently not the greatest time to be a governor. Oh, and there's a whole lot more going on in the world. The Olympics are still going on. Simone Biles finally got in and uh, and performed, and, and I'm, I'm grateful for her because I think it's a good sign, and I'm grateful for the people who went to the Olympics specifically to see her. They finally got a chance to do that. So this is not a news show. Don't, uh, don't think that I would pretend to be that. I just wanted to point on, out that there's a whole lot of stuff going on out there in the world. And I guess my real question is, how is that affecting you? Does it affect you? Let me take just a moment and say hi to people. Hi, Jennifer. Where am I going? I don't think I'm going anywhere. Am I? Did I say I was going somewhere? I might have. Brenda, hello, darling. How is the um, physical therapy going? I know you just started, um, but how does it feel? How's your, your body reacting to all of that? Brenda, Brenda. And Jennifer, 
How are you tonight? And how is our guy? We have to check in on the whole family here. So we will. We will. It has been occurring to me this week that there are a whole lot of people in this world with a whole lot of stuff going on. Yeah, I can see where that might happen. Jennifer says this insanity disturbs me. No kidding. It's, sometimes it just, just feels like the whole world's gone mad, doesn't it? So do we come here on Wednesdays to kind of cool it? To not <clears throat> to get away from the maddening crowd? <laughs> to uh, center ourselves in a higher truth, a greater truth? and uh, watch that happen. Physical therapy was good. Good, Brenda. Did I read that you have 30 sessions? Good. Use every one, pay lots of attention, and practice in between, but don't hurt yourself. Be good. And Kirk's on his way home, so that's a good thing. Yay! All right, then. So... Why don't I just jump in and talk about what, I, what I'm going to talk about tonight? Because um, I think it's kind of a fun topic, and I'd sort of like to think, hear what you all have to say about it once I've said it. So, according to my very unscientific research, but my... Um, highly personal observations. I've narrowed it down to there are three kinds of people on earth. Angels, as in those we may be entertaining unaware that they are angels. The ones who tend to show up in our life often uninvited, usually unannounced, and frequently unrecognizable. People who bring messages and unexpected gifts. Um, people who pop in and say something and then disappear and we go, what was that? Um, people whose presence and actions lead us to believe that they've been sent into our lives directly from God. And they tend to kind of pop in and come what they've come to do and, and then pop out again, the, the behavior one might just expect from a supernatural being, although at least in the moment they seem to be very real and, and very human, don't they? Anyway, I had an experience of one of those one time when I was at Spirit Works in Burbank. Um, you might remember the place. And when I was there, I was in the office one afternoon and um, a very street worn old man came in. He had on a hat and, and a vest and a jacket and pants and, and stuff, but nothing really matched. He didn't really seem to match. And he was kind of grimy, to say the least. And we talked for a couple of minutes, and, and I invited him to come to church on Sunday, and he said, you would let me? And I said, well, of course we would let you. It's, it's church. Everyone's welcome. We'd love to have you come. And, uh, and he said, well, I don't know. I might. But thank you, because other churches around here have, have sent me away. And I said, well, I don't know what their reasons would be, but you'd be very welcome here. And he said, thank you. Um, may I do a little trick for you? And I said, sure. And he reached into his jacket pocket, and he pulled out 
what I can only describe as the whitest handkerchief I have ever seen in my life. It just almost glowed. It was so white, especially next to his street wornness. And he pulled it out and he did something with it and then he made it disappear and then he reached back into his pocket and pulled it out again and uh, he just had me mesmerized for a few minutes. And what mesmerized me almost more than his little magic trick was that incredibly white handkerchief stayed incredibly white. None of his street wornness wiped off on that incredibly white handkerchief. And he finally put it back in his pocket and I said, thank you, that was wonderful. And and he left and as he was leaving I said, now don't forget, you're very welcome to come to church on Sunday. We're, uh, we're here at like 9 and 11, whatever the services were at that moment in time. And he said, thank you and smiled, a great big smile, and then reached in one more time and waved his incredibly white handkerchief, and then walked down the block and disappeared. I decided he was an angel. He didn't come to church on Sunday. I don't think he needed it. But he sure was special. I think he was an angel. Okay, and then there are the godlings, the people who are in any given moment manifestations of the presence of something good. They are the, the special human beings who are kind of the spirit of God on earth. Clearly human, yet clearly created in the image and likeness of a good God. At least some of the time. Maybe not all of the time. But kind of like angels becoming. And then there are the others. The non-angels. The less than godly. Those for whom the acronym EGR, Extra Grace Required, was conceived. Sometimes they are trying. Sometimes they are very trying. They tend to make our lives more challenging. They make our days more difficult and our nights longer. And often create sleeplessness for us. And sometimes we are they. Oh, maybe not all the time and maybe not consistently, but I know I can be one of them at any given time for lots of different reasons. I can be any one of them at any given time for lots of reasons. The heat brings out the less than godling in me. I get cranky and whiny when the thermostat goes over 73 degrees. Oh, okay, when it goes over 75 degrees, but not much higher than that. But I can be downright angelic when the temperature is mild or the air conditioning is on and things are going my way. But that's enough about me. Let's talk about other people, shall we? See, it's easy most of the time to love and accept the angels, the ones who show up with gifts and blessings for our lives. And it's easy to love the godlings, bless them. They charm us. They make our lives charming. They are clear and present proof of the children of God. It's sometimes a little more difficult 
to find room in our hearts for the others. But even though it may be challenging, we really must. Ernest Holmes, the founder of religious science, wrote, there is a mystical saying, God in all, through all, and above all. He went on, we all partake of the one life. It is all of us. No one can exhaust the divine nature and all live by it and through it. It is in us and also beyond us. It is in us, but also around us. It is all we are, and it is all of us. Now, he didn't say, except them. He said, it is all of us. So let me reword Holmes, not so that we can understand the angels and godlings in our lives. We get it for them, but for the others so that we can learn to get it, so we can get it for them as well, and maybe for ourselves. God is in all, even them, even me on a cranky day. God is through all, even them even me when the temperature climbs. We all partake of the one life of God. It's in every one of us, even them, even me, even you, all the time. It can't go anywhere. It can't go away. It has nowhere to go where it isn't already. No one, no one, not them, not me, not you, can discard the God within them. Though we can certainly hide it. But no one, not them, not me, not you, can lose it. No one, not them, not me, not you, can exhaust God's nature. We all live by it and, and through it. It is in us and also around us. My petty thinking cannot change that. My less than perfect thinking cannot change that. It's in me. It's in us and all around us. And it's all that we are. It's all that they are. All that I am. And all that you are. We really need to get that. Now, of course, you could download a copy of this talk. Or we could write it all down. We could put it on post-its and paste it on all our mirrors. Or we could replay the tape on a continuous loop and listen to it all day long. And that would certainly at some point change our thinking and change our lives at some point. Or we could practice what Jesus called the 11th commandment. We could learn to actually really, truly love one another. All of us, even them, even ourselves. What a concept. What a concept to really, truly love everyone. <laughs> Somehow we know that's right, don't we? And somehow we know that's important. Don't we? It's the doing it that's a challenge. So here's what I think we need to know. 
whatever it looks like in the moment. Everything originates in God. Everything begins in spirit, in the one. Everything comes from the same source. And we are part of the everything. We have to be by definition. Everything is part of the everything. And just as God's thinking makes universes and fills worlds with living things, so our thought makes our world and fills it with living things and experiences and all the angels and all the godlings and all the thems by the activity of our thought we draw things into our lives if there are thems in your world it's because you brought them in your thinking created them we have imagined sometimes that outside things and, and other people, the thems of the world, controlled us. And all the time we've had within us that which could have changed everything. So here's the really good news. It still can change everything if we're willing to let it. Remember, you can't lose it. It's in there all the time. You can kind of not use it, but even then you're using it. Because if you find yourself saying, they're annoying me, they're in my way, they're stopping me, they're fill in the blank, the thems of the world. If we're saying that to ourselves, then the universe with its one word vocabulary says yes, and makes that so. And if you don't want it to be so, you got to stop thinking it. We attract to ourselves the mirror of what we think, wherever we are, whatever or whomever we may be experiencing. And we are, and this is sometimes the hard thing to realize, we are exactly where we belong to become more. Not less. To grow in grace. Not frustration. To experience the living presence of spirit in our lives, right where we are, right now. You know, there is that which we seem to be if we just look at our lives and our experience and our human rewards. And then there is that which we really are, which is so much more and greater than that. And what is true for any one of us on a spiritual level must be true for all of us. Even them. True spiritual growth is seeing the perfection of God in everything. Seeing a good and generous and creative God in all of us. Not just the big life surrounding us in nature. I mean, that's pretty easy, isn't it? And not just the nice things around us. That's easy, too. And not just the angels and the godlings. But in all life. In every life. 
even our own. In the not-so-pretty life we sometimes encounter? Not even in the frustrating life we sometimes bump into? And in the life within us, regardless of the deep, dark truth we think we know about ourselves or someone else. Our lives are limited, not by spirit, not by God, but by our own inability to see the perfection in any given moment in our lives. And the inability to recognize how the same power that created whatever is going on in the moment can change it. Our thought can create a peaceful, noble, grace-filled, healthy, beautiful world. But we have to direct it to do that. When our thought is directed toward the highest good and the deepest truth, it will create a greater reality. Your life is more than you know because you are more than you know because God within each of us is more than we have ever known God is creation spirit, soul, body thought activity, result. And we are created in the image and likeness of that. It is written that we were created just a little lower than the angels. Our assignment then is to rise. We have gone far in the right direction. We just have a little way to go. We may not be quite there yet. We have to come to realize that our creative power is the same as the creative power of God in our individual lives. When we begin to get that, even a little bit, we open the door. And the door, once opened, opens the floodgates of creation and change in our lives. We begin, I think, by being more loving, more inclusive and less, less exclusive. As we do that, we automatically expand into a greater light. Our world, created by our consciousness, will take its wonder and color and, and beauty and wholeness from our understanding of our relationship with the divine. Our world, our affairs, our relationships with everyone will take their wonder and color from our perception of our relationship to one another. Because like it or not, folks, ultimately all really are one. It can't work any other way. It won't work any other way. It just doesn't work any other way. We must not just pay lip service to love. It's a bigger concept than we know. God, creation, evolution, 
is at the very heart of love. It is love on the grandest scale expressing itself in any moment, in every moment. <sighs> it's grand. It's amazing. Our individual universe is perfect. And it is forever evolving. Forever completing itself in order to lift us, to inspire us, to evolve us so that every experience, every encounter teaches us to go higher, to transcend the momentary experience, the previous experience, the old life, the way it was, and to grow in our understanding of God to grow ourselves in the reality of God. We've got to stop thinking of God as that guy on the throne with the pearly gates and in the clouds and with the angels playing the harp. And I know most of us don't really believe in that, but we still somehow in our heads have an anthropomorphic God that looks and thinks like we do. We have, in fact, created God in our own image and likeness. And I think that does spirit a disservice. Because that God won't be an image. And it is not. And we are not. There is no limit to the possibility inherent in all people, in everyone, in angels, in godlings, in you, and in them, whomever they may be. Ernest Holmes again wrote, the greatest good that can come to anyone is the forming within him of an absolute certainty of himself and of his relationship to the universe. Forever removing the sense of heaven as being outside himself. Our awareness of our oneness with God, with the God life all around us, as well as the God life within us will change that. Will change everything. Our awareness that this life around us, within us, being experienced by us is determined by our thoughts and will heal us, will heal our experiences will heal our lives and can heal our world. So our task, I think, is to be duly grateful for the angels. They bring us gifts after all, so why would you not be grateful? To truly love and appreciate the godlings the ones who stick around and do the loving. And to the greatest of our ability to be one of them at every opportunity. And to learn to love the others. Those who require extra grace. Especially when we are one of them until such time as we have changed our minds, until we have changed our lives. And through loving, until we have changed our world. Do I hear an amen? 
Amen. Oh, I do. And so it is. <laughs> it's my little cherry picture. Everyone should have it. And I have, I have a new computer. Well, I've actually had the new computer for what? Oh, two months. Two months. Yeah, but we finally got it set up, so I'm working on a new computer, and I'm having so much fun with it. It's faster. It does things differently. I have to find things. <laughs> I'm laughing. Jennifer says he, he makes me really crabby. Me too. Hi, Heidi. I was watching a video earlier of your backyard. How beautiful is that? <laughs> Hi, Chrissy. I love it when my family checks in, especially my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> And everybody's saying hi to her. I love it. My little celebrity. Now, for those of you that are wondering, this is not my new hairstyle. This is what happens when I wash it and it doesn't dry in time to do any styling. So I just go like this and hope I don't embarrass myself too badly. It's shiny and clean. It's just not styled. Nor is it going in the right direction, but that's neither here nor there. Oh... <laughs> you guys are wonderful. So how is everybody tonight? How's the world treating you? Brenda, you say that uh, the, the physical therapy is going well. Yay. And that it will be productive. That's good to hear. I know at one point I needed some physical therapy and I uh, I resisted going. <laughs> it sounded too much like exercise to me. Um, but I loved it and it just did wonders. So I'm going to know that for you. The noise here. My goodness. <laughs> I'm sharing here with Brenda tonight. So, what have you done in the world to make it a better place this week? Have you been an angel? You popped into someone's life and, and said the right thing or did the right thing or created the, helped them create the right thing and then popped out because that's what you came to do. Have you been a godling? Just been there doing cool stuff, nice stuff, loving stuff for someone, anyone? <laughs> or have you been a them? I can be a them. We can all be thems. We don't usually realize we're being a them in the moment. It's later. It's when we you know, wake up in the middle of the night and go, ah, I shouldn't have left that there. I shouldn't have said that that way. I am... Uh, now, sometimes you have people around you who will remind you that you're being a them. And sometimes we don't. Okay, Heidi, good. I was going to ask you about the CAT scan. And next up results, so you don't know yet. That was going to be my second question. Okay. Will you keep me posted, please? I want to know what's going on. Jennifer's in a good place tonight. <laughs> it hasn't instigated anything. Okay, Lauren, what, what time and where? So I can really zero in. 
lui. And all of you out there doing interesting things, interesting things, finding the angels in the OR, um, exercising them and their talents. I just want to know that any of you that are going, I, I want to know that, that Brenda, who's doing physical therapy, and Heidi, who's waiting for the results of the CT scan, and Laura, who has a little surgery going on tomorrow, um, at 7 a.m. at Holy Cross, okay, know that I am with you in prayer. No, I will set my alarm and I will be there with you in prayer. Just know that, please. I love setting the alarm. I don't think I've ever heard it actually go off. I'm one of those people that wakes up before it goes off and then just turns it off and get up. Yeah. And Jennifer's praying. Oh, you are going to be so prayed over. So prayed over. You're going to wonder why you were even a little bit anxious. know that everybody that shows up is spirit in costume because they are some have doctor costumes and some have nurses costumes some have anesthesiologist costumes and you know some have cranky costumes life is a costume party life is a costume party i wonder if i've ever I've, I've said life is a masquerade. I wonder if I should, I wonder if I've ever done life as a costume party. If not, I will. I like that idea. Oh, good. Heidi wants you to know that Kathy bought your crystal book. Wow, thank you very much. Heidi's a, a good rep. You ought to talk to her about yeah, that. Yeah, marketing <laughs> department, Heidi. Yeah. Wow. Tomorrow is Spirit's first birthday. For those of you who won oh, wonder yeah. about things like that. <laughs> oh, Heidi, thank you. That's very sweet. Brenda sleeps through the alarm. Well, that'll show it, won't it? <laughs> Don't bother me. Now, there's something in me that just when I said it, it goes off in my head long before it goes off. And it's not that I don't sleep. I sleep just fine. I just wake up before the alarm goes off, usually 10 or 15 minutes before the alarm goes off. And then I get up, because that's what I want to do. Thank you, Heidi. I really do appreciate that. I want to come meditate in your backyard and watch the koi fish. Your backyard's just beautiful. It really, um, it mirrors your, your, your love and the time you have spent in it. It's beautiful. <laughs> There's a one less crazy person out there. It helps, doesn't it? Oh. So, Laura, you're going to keep us posted on what's going on. Heidi's going to keep us posted on um, CAT scan results. Thank you, Heidi. Well, I'm a Libra. I'm supposed to bring balance to life. And I'm, you know, constantly working on it myself. Okay, good, Laura. Thank you. So, 
prayer requests other than the ones that you've already spoken about? Pop them into the little, the little boxes if you haven't already. I've had fun talking about mystic stuff the past couple of Sundays. That's been been sort of an adventure. I, I know you do, Jennifer. I know you do. I know you, you keep Kirk on an even keel. That's why you're so good for each other. Any more prayer requests? Oh, the awakening part. Now you are his alarm. Oh, you two are just adorable. You make me happy. So, how about we pray? And if you think of something you would like prayer support for while I'm praying, go ahead and pop it in, and I will try to keep my eyes open and and notice about how far behind is the taping? Oh, Do you think of this thing? 15, se 15 seconds today. Okay. So I'll try to talk slow. Give you time to catch up. So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes if that's good for you. If not, just soft focus. Allow your attention to go within. Not be distracted by stuff and the things around you. Go to that place where you are serene, where you are peaceful. That place within you that knows really that all is right with the world. And that if anything feels out of whack, it is only because you have not yet discovered the gift in it. Because everything has a gift in it. Everything comes from spirit and so it must be good. Got it, Jennifer? God is good. Life is good. The natural tendency of life is toward good. And so if there seems to be an interruption in that flow, it is only that we are not yet seeing it quite. And so I pray now for all of us that we see rightly. That we see the truth and the good and the God in everything and everyone. I know that God is all that there is. all that there is. We see it so easily in a sunrise or a sunset, so magnificently in the ocean and in the forests, in the vast desert, each of us in our own way finding God in that recognizing it as nothing less than spirit expressing it.
And so tonight I know for each of us that our vision becomes even clearer. That our knowing becomes even stronger. That our awakening becomes even more acute. And that we are more spirit-filled, more spirit-aware way, more spirit-awakened tonight than we have ever been. And even more tomorrow and more the next day and the next. Our journey of awakening is amazing, is life-changing. is upon us. And so we let it be. Specifically, I know for Brenda that the physical therapy is working miracles, just like the many other miracles that are occurring in her life. And I know that she sees them and feels them and is aware of them and accepts them joyously. I know for Heidi that the CT scan reveals only good news, only what she needs to know to be physically whole and perfect. To be healed. I know for Laura, an absolutely safe and easy surgery, that she is in nothing less than the hands of God. That spirit surrounds her, it is spirit that touches her, it is spirit that serves her, and nothing else. And she sees that, she sees the God within everyone who approaches her tomorrow. And knowing that, she knows she is safe and secure and that there is nothing to worry about because God is so very present in her life. I know that Jennifer sees the God in everyone and is delighted by it, uplifted by it, amazed and sometimes amused by it. It is as though she has had new glasses and sees the world through God's eyes not just her own, and certainly not just her own experience. She truly sees the spirit in and through everything, as we are all doing. How blessed we are by this gift. How changed we are in a very good way by this seeing. How transformed we are by this awareness. And what a gift we are to life because of it. We can see clearly now. And all that we see is spirit expressing. And if there are any unexpressed prayer requests,
Those two are answered because God knows. And we are blessed beyond measure. We are gifted with love, with patience. Thank you, Kurt. With strength, with courage. wonder and with new vision and we are so grateful so very very grateful for what we now see and know and so we just get out of our own way and let God be God in us as us and through us. And so it is. So it is. So we let it be. We have a closing song. Don't forget to listen. Click on the little box before you go away. And just listen to the music and contemplate what we've been talking about and how it applies to your life. I love you all. Have a very good week. I'll be thinking of you early tomorrow morning, Flora. All of you, keep me posted. You know how to find me. I love you. Be well. I'll see you on Sunday. I'd say go with God, but you really can't go any other way.